What's up YouTube and welcome to my pickups video for the month of July 2024. This was a very action-packed month with a lot of travel for personal and work reasons and also a video game convention. So let me kind of walk you through what my month looked like and then honestly it was a great month for pickups so we'll have lots to show. I uh, spent the first week of the month in uh, Southern California, visited uh, San Diego, which I've been to many times, but also went to the Inland Empire of California, which I hadn't been to really, and also Palm Springs, and visited a bunch of uh, minor league baseball games out that way, but also just did some game hunting, which was really cool at some locations I'd never been to. Um, so got a couple things from that trip I'll show, and then um, also hit some book-offs in the SoCal area as well. Um, then I had a work trip to Kansas City in the middle of the month and had a great find from one of the chain stores out there that I'll talk about. And then uh, just this past weekend was also my local Mo Game Con, uh, the annual convention we have here in St. Louis. And uh, I got some cool stuff at that too. So very expensive month for me, but was well worth it with some of the cool things I got. Uh, so with no more hesitation, let's talk about some of those pickups. So we're going to kick off with some Game Boy releases first. Uh, these first two games are Japanese, and they were both found at book-off locations, two separate locations in the SoCal area. Uh, what I noticed is even there was a employee unpacking packages from Japanese book-offs inside the location and putting uh, several import games on the shelf as I was there for one of these. So it was kind of interesting to see that uh, their inventory in these U.S. stores isn't necessarily being driven just by trade-ins, especially for the import titles. They're actually shipping overstock from some of the Japanese book-offs to uh, supply the U.S. stores. So the first one of these I got is um, a game that I had heard that these came out, but I'd kind of forgotten about them completely. And this is the Namco Gallery series for the original Game Boy. Uh, this is volume one. I believe there was three of these total. And it has an interesting collection of Namco arcade and also home release uh, early titles on it. These didn't come out in the U.S., and it's kind of a shame because I think that maybe with some retooling of some of the titles, they could have been pretty successful. Uh, it also supports the Super Game Boy, so it has the enhanced backgrounds and all that that uh, the Super Game Boy titles have with the additional color, which is kind of cool to see, too. The main reason I wanted this one is I am a huge fan of Mappy. If you've seen my prior videos, you probably know that. I own a Mappy arcade cabinet, and um, one of the things that I didn't realize is that Mappy makes an appearance on this collection. Uh, not the greatest version of the game for a home release or a portable release because there's so much scrolling in the game to make it fit on the screen since the Game Boy screen is so small. Uh, but it is playable. It's not too bad. The other things that were interesting about this compilation is it has Galaga on it, which I'm a big Galaga fan also. And I had to go back and play the U.S. version of uh, there's a Galaga Galaxian pack that we got here that Nintendo published themselves. And the version that's on that is very different than the Galaga that's on this. So kind of weird that Namco did their own way for this. I won't necessarily say this one's better, but it's just different than what we got here. So if you're a Galaga fan, you might be interested in that to spot the differences. Uh, the other two games on the, the pack, though, were also kind of interesting. The first one is just a golf game that uh, I think was a Famicom release for Namco. Not something I'm going to play. Uh, but the one that really got me hooked, and honestly my new favorite on this compilation, is Battle City. It's a uh, game that I don't believe had an arcade version, but it was a game that Namco released for the Famicom in, the, uh, in Japan, but we never got it here. And uh, Battle City can best be summarized as Pac-Man, but with tanks. And it has a really nice bonus feature that you have a, uh, like a trophy that you have to protect on the screen at all times. All the enemy tanks are trying to get to the trophy and destroy it. And so uh, not only are you trying to pick off the tanks Pac-Man style, but you also have to make sure that you don't have other tanks going after your trophy, which is an instant game over if they get it. Really a fun dynamic, and now that I've played so much of it on this, I want to go back and get the Famicom release, because I don't think it's very expensive, and honestly, it's really fun. Um, definitely a game that I would recommend checking out. So... As I said, there's two other games in this gallery series. I might get them. I think this one, honestly, I just wanted the most because it had Mappy on it, but uh, the others might be worth checking out, too. Uh, the other game I got from a different book off in SoCal is this Vic Tokai release that I've always wanted. This is a game called Lucal, I think is the best way to say it. It's L-U-C-L-E. And it's an action puzzle game in kind of the vein of like a Marble Madness. Um, you have this weird like pivoting double pronged device, I guess is all I can say, that rotates throughout the screen. And you have to dodge obstacles and get to a goal in a very short amount of time, much like Marble Madness. 
Uh, really fun game. There's a lot of like physics at play with how it operates. There's speed up things that make the device pivot even faster that you know can kind of help you and also hurt you at the same time. Um, and really a fun dynamic. I think that uh, this game's interesting because it did come out in Europe, but we did not get it here in the US, and I think we missed out. Um, I don't fully know the development history on this game. It's possible Vic Tokai developed this in-house, but they also did farm out a lot of their games that uh, other developers made. And honestly, the music in it does kind of seem a little bit like a European developer, but the gameplay and the art style does feel more Japanese. So if you know more about this game, I'd be curious uh, what the history is. But Highly recommend checking this out. There's no language barrier or anything like that. It's very pick up and play and uh, kind of a shame that we didn't get it in the US. Can be kind of a pricey game, but uh, Book Off had it for about half the price that it goes um, online, which is surprising considering that's where I got it from. <laughs> but uh, was very happy to get it and add this to my Game Boy collection. Uh, we'll talk about another find I got from SoCal. This was from a game store that I'd never been to in uh, Orange County. And it was a really great store. It was called uh, Hidden Gym Video Games, I believe. And they had a lot of really high-end stuff. Um, I mean, I think that was kind of their specialty is they didn't want a bunch of filler in their store. And they really wanted to go after maybe the more serious collector or those that had deep pockets to spend, uh, as you might in Orange County. And I got one game that uh, I had been wanting quite a bit that I thought was a fantastic deal. And that is Castlevania II Belmont's Revenge, uh, complete in the box. Really nice condition, had all the inserts with it, and I figured I couldn't pass this up, so I'm going to sell my loose copy of this game and uh, add this to the collection. Um, I do have the original Castlevania complete in box for Game Boy, but now I need a copy of the third one, which is obviously the really expensive one. So, happy to get this. Um, I do think the artwork is interesting on the cover because uh, your character is so tiny <laughs> on this uh, detailed castle scene. I mean, it's cool artwork, but... For a tiny little Game Boy box like this, it may not be the best. Maybe it looked better when it was blown up on a full poster or something. So uh, definitely an improvement from the first uh, Castlevania's artwork, but very different, I would say. Uh, I do like this game. I think that it's you know a little bit slow-paced, as most of the Game Boy ones are, but it's actually a pretty solid title. It's much better than the first Castlevania Adventure. So you can definitely recommend it if you, for some reason, have never played it, but uh, happy to get a nice, complete upgrade to that one. Uh, while I was in California, I happened to be trolling eBay on uh, my phone and noticed that a game that I've been wanting really bad for the DS had come up for sale at a great price from a U.S. seller. It's also a Japanese import and typically goes for much higher than what I paid, even though it still was pretty expensive. So I still bit the bullet on it and bought it anyway, even though I was already spending a ton of money out there and decided to order this. And it came in great condition. This game is Kuropata for the uh, Nintendo DS. And uh, again, Japanese exclusive game. Um, I think it came out on Japanese PCs as well, but definitely not uh, something that we ever got on like a home console. Uh, really interesting game, art style. It is um, also like an action puzzle game, I guess would be the best way to describe it, but very different than the other one we just talked about. Uh, this one has kind of an art style like uh, the Umahari, Umahari Kawase series, where it's uh, a little girl that's trying to overcome obstacles to get to a goal is basically the idea. Uh, but this one is also very physics-based in that you need to like throw items and add like uh, pathways to make things happen in the stage. And you need to experiment a lot to get through the very short stages. So what it is handy is there is a very quick uh, rewind button that you can instantly push to reset the stage and all the things you move to try to get to the target or the goal in the, in the stage. Um, very difficult and fun game to play. Um, there's some really cool walkthroughs in this. I think I originally became aware of this from a Retro Pals stream years ago, and I thought, wow, this looks like a really fun game to play. Uh, the Secret is now out, I guess, because it has gotten pretty expensive, but I definitely recommend it. And um, very unique title. You should definitely check out videos of this if you haven't seen it before. So, cool game, and I wish we would have got it in the U.S. Um, next, I'm going to move on to probably the biggest thing of my month, which at the time I didn't think that uh, it would be, but this was something I stumbled on in my trip to Kansas City for work. I decided to stop at one of the chain uh, stores out that way that we have here in St. Louis as well. And just on, on my way home, decided to pop in and ultimately found like a holy grail. So um, I have owned this game for 23 years or so, um, where I bought a copy from a video store that was going out of business and it was complete, complete in the box. 
uh, but the artwork on it was severely sun faded from sitting in the video store window for the years. So I've always wanted to upgrade this copy, and now I've got a really mint copy of this game, and that is one of the big heavy hitters of the Sega Genesis, Musha, <laughs> which um, not only is a very expensive game, but also is a very fun shooter. Uh, one of my favorites on the system, if not my favorite. I really like compile shooters. This one, especially for being an early release from 1990, has some mind-blowing effects that uh, still look great today, and really some well-thought-out ideas that they did with parallax scrolling that uh, set the stage for a fantastic shooter experience. So this was interesting because this had come in with a trade-in um, at the store. You could tell it was all part of the same trade because they all have stickers on them that have like the date that they came in. And it was mostly like Sega Master System games from 1988 vintage. And then there were several early Genesis games all complete in the box from like 1989 and 1990 but nothing newer than that so you could tell it was somebody that was a very hardcore Sega Master System fan they got a Genesis probably when it first launched bought up several of the first party titles and then happened to buy this <laughs> uh, you know in their collection and then the whole thing got traded in um, I am just bl mind blown by the condition of this like obviously the box was a big upgrade for mine because mine had a bunch of fade on it but uh, if you open it up, the manual is super nice, the cartridge is nice, and then we get to some even more interesting pieces, is that um, it has the original warranty card from Seismic, which uh, many of the copies of this are missing, but then you could tell this was a really well-loved copy of the game, because this person cut out magazine clippings of codes from Game Pros and EGMs back in the day, and stuffed them in the box as well. So. I love finding stuff like this. I mean, you can tell this was a true, like, one-owner title. This wasn't one that went through many people and uh, probably got found in a basement or attic or something like that, and maybe mom or grandma traded it in or whatever, but very happy to get um, a very excellent condition copy of this to upgrade for my collection. I'm going to sell my other copy that, um, you know, has the faded artwork, but ultimately the manual and, and cartridge are nice, so... Really happy to have this upgrade in my collection. Now, why I think this was such a remarkable find is I didn't pay anywhere near market price for this game, complete in box. Uh, this chain is interesting because if they get, it just kind of depends on the location, but if they get a game that's complete in the box and it's a retro game, their system doesn't have a way to differentiate that. So they typically will just price it as the loose cartridge price, which is what happened here. And even their loose cartridge price happened to be under market price for even just a loose card of this right now. So. I walked away with this very, very happy. Um, I decided to leave the other titles there. There was nothing that I needed necessarily. I think it was all stuff I had. But there were honestly some several other solid Master System and Genesis titles that were all complete and probably in the same condition like this. Uh, well cared for, original owner type stuff. Um, but I know I'm kind of rambling, but yeah, very, very happy to have this in the collection. It was a game that, you know, you talk about games that are rare and are just like internet rare. Um, I have never come across another copy of Musha that nice in person, at least at a good price, in all my years of game hunting. So um, it has been a long journey to get this upgrade, but very happy about it. Um, so that's all the games I got, but let's talk about some other related stuff I picked up and also had um, uh, got over the month. So first one of these was um, from MoGameCon. Uh, my buddy Lenny actually gave me a couple black NES sleeves. He knows I'm going for a full set of these, and he had some spares. And then um, he gave me some other things that we'll talk about here, too. So thank you very much to Lenny for that. Um, also got some manuals this month. So um, I picked up in another store in SoCal. Uh, they didn't have any games I wanted at the store, but they had uh, a box of loose manuals, which was great. So I pawed through that and found uh, a couple Game Boy manuals that I didn't have. So I got Out of Gas, which is a kind of weird overhead action game that uh, you don't really see too often. And so I was happy to get the manual for that. And then I got a manual for the Punisher while I was there, too. Um, both of these were very, very cheap, so I was happy to pick those up. Uh, another manual get from Lenny was uh, at the con, he gave me a copy of R-Type 3 for Super Nintendo. This is a very rare title. I don't think it's almost, honestly underrated as far as how rare it is. Um, I have a really nice cartridge of this, but I never had the manual or box, so kind of gets me closer to getting a complete copy of this, and uh, highly appreciate that because this is definitely a hard manual to get. So thank you again to Lenny for that. 
Uh, we'll talk about a couple other things I got at the con. So I didn't buy a lot of things, but I bought, I spent a lot of money, let's put it that way. Um, and it was kind of unintentionally, there was a new vendor there that I had never seen before that had some really excellent complete in box, um, 8 bit and 16 bit type stuff. He also had a lot of complete original Game Boy games, which you never see, you know, at cons even, at least in that kind of bulk. Like he probably had 30 or 40 different titles that he had complete in the box. So it was a very dangerous booth to be looking at because a lot of stuff I would be interested in. Um, kudos to the vendor. He was very uh, willing to work with me and aggressive in making sure that we made a sale, uh, which I, I give credit to because I think a lot of vendors just kind of kick back and wait for the money to roll in. This is somebody that definitely wanted to make money that day. So uh, we were able to come to terms on something that I had my eye on, but I really wasn't anticipating buying. And that was uh, Dragon Fighter for the NES. And so I had a cartridge of this in my collection that I've owned for probably 20 plus years. But I never had the box or manual for it. And I've always really liked this game. It's very uncommon. It was published by Sofell. Uh, but why I like it so much is it was actually developed by Natsume, which is one of my favorite developers. And uh, very underrated game, I think. I mean, people are probably coming around on it now because everything on NES has been discovered. But I think for many years, people didn't even know this game existed. So he had it complete in the box. I did not need the cartridge, and I didn't even ask, uh, because I tend to bother vendors when I do ask, it seems like, um, if he would be willing to separate it. And so he even volunteered that, hearing that I had the cartridge. He said, oh, well, you just want to buy the cartridge of manual, or the box of manual? And I said, oh, well, sure, like, if we could work out a deal on that. And suddenly that dropped the price considerably. So um, still it was very expensive, but very happy to get this in the collection. It's a game that I've always thought was very cool. And uh, really nice the vendor was able to work with me on that, because so now I have a nice complete copy of that uh, without needing to sell off an extra cartridge. And then the same vendor, this one wasn't nearly as expensive, but same thing, he was willing to separate it. I only needed the box for this one, I didn't need the card or manual, uh, and so he was able to sell me a copy of Silver Surfer, uh, the box for this one as well. And then we did a bundle deal, obviously, for putting the two together. Um, not a fan of this game, it's not a very good <laughs> NES title at all, and neither is the, the developer Arcadia. Uh, but why I wanted this one is it was the last game uh, that was a Marvel comic related release for the NES that I didn't have complete in the box. So that completes a subset for me, possibly a future video that I can make if anybody's interested in those. Um, but kind of neat to see those in retrospect because Marvel stuff is even bigger now than it was back when these games were released. Silver Surfer probably being the exception on that. I don't think this character's really taken off. But uh, cool artwork either way and happy to have another uh, box for an NES game. So... Those were my big con purchases, but I got a couple other things there. Um, I did get a used Nintendo cleaning kit. This is the exact same ones that we used to sell at Funko Land when I worked there. And I actually wanted this for um, usage purposes. So I've had my own personal cleaning kit that I've had since the Funko Land days, but I've used um, the pads and fluid up just due to needing to clean a lot of NES games over the years. And this one, I don't think this person ever used it. I mean, honestly, the fluid bottle's full. It's got all the pads, all that kind of stuff. So just gives me a nice refill. And um, honestly, I think these are really good quality cleaning kits. There's a lot of other ones on the market now, but this one has always treated me well. And I think if you ever buy, um, you know, random NES games from collections, there's a lot of ch good chance you're going to need to clean it before it'll work in your system. So always happy to get uh, another one of those. And it was really cheap. And then um, I was looking for magazines this year at the uh, at the con as well. I like buying them in person just so I don't have to pay shipping. But uh, there were very few magazines this year. And honestly, there were a lot of people interested in buying magazines this year, much more so than I'd seen in the past. So I guess the secret is out that uh, buying vintage uh, retro game magazines is interesting or a cool thing to collect maybe because games have gotten so expensive. So they're, they're getting dry out there. But uh, I did get one I needed from a booth, and this is the 1994 Video Game Buyer's Guide uh, that was a supplement put out by EGM. Uh, EGM did these every year for several years, and typically it was a recap of the prior year releases. So it's got a lot of recycled uh, footage from 1993, but it also has like a section on what they felt were like the best games of the year by every genre. And then also what were the worst games and worst systems of the year. So um, kind of interesting to read through their, their takes on that. Um, I have several of these in my collection. I don't know how many. I don't think I've indexed these. And I'm pretty sure I needed this one. But uh, it stood out and it was cheap. And I decided to just go ahead and grab it. So that is uh, my very busy month and my very expensive month. And I'm hoping August is going to be a little easier on the wallet. But some of those things that I came across uh, in the wild, I just couldn't pass on so I was very happy to, to get those upgrades or things that I didn't have in my collection to start with uh, but that about does it you can let me know what you think uh, please take a moment like comment subscribe and I will talk to you soon have a great day or night
wherever you are.